Well, 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 what do we have here? Another new glitch discovered nearly 20 years after Perfect Dark's release, which has helped lower the game's second oldest world record, Villa Agent 106, a record originally set in December 2007. Well, knock me over with a feather, that's never happened before. No, but seriously, while new strategies being discovered to help lower ancient records is a tale as old as time, the way that this one happened is actually pretty crazy and something that I personally never really thought would happen. We'll get to that in a bit. But first I wanted to point out that I'd actually been thinking about doing a video on Villa Agent for a little while now, as 106 was indeed the game's second oldest record, having been originally set by Perfect Ace more than 4,000 days ago. And I wanted to examine whether or not lower was possible. Villa Agent was kind of in this interesting spot. You see, there are two sorts of types of levels we can look at when considering whether or not lower is possible simple levels and complex levels. A simple level might be something like a Damn Agent 53 or Perfect Dark's oldest record, War Agent 25. In these cases, the level is straightforward enough, mostly just pure strafing without too many things going on, where you can pretty easily understand all the variables and quickly determine if the record is maxed or if lower is possible, and if so, under what specific conditions. Complex levels are stages with generally higher skill caps that are extremely difficult to optimize, something like a Silo Double Agent or a Pelagic 2 Perfect Agent. There's just so much going on in these levels, so much guard luck, so much chaos, that they're almost never going to be fully optimized. Villa Agent on the surface appears to be a more complex stage. You need to quickly snipe these two guards at the start, there are many tricky doors and button presses, and then you need to masterfully game-end eight guards who are hiding in inconspicuous locations in the last couple of rooms, which could almost always be YOLO'd a little bit more. But the thing is, there is still a lot of strafing in the level, which gives it those simple elements. Aces, Mark of 106, had all the simple parts executed perfectly, and all the complex parts were done at an exquisite level, to the point that people were able to match 106, but never improve it. And even at that, only top talent were ever able to match 106 with time. Clemens in 2009, Cedric in 2011, Carl Jobst in 2015, and Mark Rutsu, also in 2015, with one of his few masterful forays into Perfect Dark. So 106 was quite highly regarded as a Perfect Dark world record, and stood the test of time. Clemens tried a fair bit for 105, but never quite nailed it. And it's possible no one would have ever nailed it. So what changed? Well, you see, on December 29, 2018, a runner by the name of Timocles uploaded a video of the Perfect Dark Xbox Live Arcade version showing a completion of the Villa Agent stage in 59.41 seconds using a glitch where you strafe onto the railing of these outdoor stairs and then clip through a wall, jumping right into the basement portion of the level. Usually you'd have to, you know, strafe through the actual intended parts of the level to reach the basement first. Now it was uncertain if this trick would work on the Nintendo 64 because the Xbox Live Arcade version uses a completely rewritten game engine. But shockingly, it did, which is nothing short of a miracle to me. You know, I, I used to really ream on the Xbox or Wii remakes and use of emulators or whatnot, thinking they were kind of useless and just served as a distraction from the original. But this is a really good example of how more players having access to the ability to speedrun Perfect Dark or GoldenEye in some form resulted in a really significant discovery in the game. And with that, we were off to the races. Big Boss Man pretty quickly untied Villa Agent with not 105, but 104. So this wasn't just a one second time saver. Even more impressive was that he got this untied within, you know, literally a few hours of the strategy being discovered. He followed this up by tying the 115 record on Special Agent using the new strategy. But not long after this, Clemens lowered Agent even more to 103. Boss responded 11 hours later by untying Special Agent to 113, 
but Clemens matched that another 12 hours later. Then, of all people to show up, after not having achieved a record since May 2018, Perfect Ace appeared and dinged off a 102 on Agent. Okay, there's a really good chance more records are set in the meantime, so I'm just going to post a screenshot here of the rankings at the moment before I export this video. It's uncertain if this glitch will save time on the hardest difficulty, Perfect Agent, because there are other objectives to do, and the entire route through the stage is different because you start the level in a different location. But I'm sure time will flesh that out. So how much time does this save? Let's compare Clemens's 103 with Mark's 106 to find out. On Clemens's 103, we can see he passes this threshold in the hallway at a high 28 seconds, around 28.7, and then he punches the guard before the first cooling system deactivation button at a low 37.2 or so. Nice. Now on Mark's 106, he passes the same hallway threshold slightly quicker, around a mid 28.4 or so. So he has about a 0.3 second edge on Clemens. But he doesn't punch the guard until about a low 42.3 or so. So even though Clemens was 0.3 seconds behind, after the trick he ended up 5.1 seconds ahead. A pretty visible time save in this case of 5.4 seconds. Now that figure might not be exact, these are just two runs we're comparing. But at the same time, we might learn how to do the stair clip even more efficiently and faster. And so I think it's very safe to say that this new strategy saves at least a solid 5 seconds, possibly a little more, and could possibly save all the way up to 6 seconds with better optimization. So, all that being said, it's pretty apparent that with the old records of 106 and 115, we should be looking at possible improvements down to 101 and 110, maybe even 1 minute and 109. Not that you will necessarily see those records set anytime soon, those old records were really hard, which is why they were only attainable by the very top players, and now that pace of a run is made even harder with this new trick, which is, I mean, obviously harder to pull off than simply strafing down to the basement of the level. But a 101 and 110 will certainly be out there, and are realistic possibilities of records that could happen until they do. So where does that leave us now? Well, the oldest record in Perfect Dark remains War Agent 25, set by Carl Jobs on March 16, 2004. GoldenEye has only one older still standing record, Runaway Agent 22, set just a week earlier on March 9, 2004. I made a video about that one, discussing that 21 is sort of maybe theoretically possible, but not quite really, and all the pieces needed for 21 haven't quite been assembled yet. War Agent could use a similar discussion because, as of right now, even assembling all the best pieces would only result in a mid-25. So 25 is optimized or maxed with current knowledge. Interestingly, War 25 and Villa 106 were the only Perfect Dark records to ever make it to 4,000 days, while Goldeneye has seen six such records, with a seventh Surface 1 Agent 102 only about a month away, and an eighth Statue Double Agent 218 not far behind. This illustrates pretty well how, generally, the Perfect Dark records have been historically much less optimized, with records more readily being improved, even with fewer people playing the game. The next oldest still standing Perfect Dark record is Extraction Agent 48 Seconds, a time set by Clemens in March 2009, and now tied by five people. 47 is definitely possible, just by piecing together the best beginnings ever and the best endings ever. And most of the Perfect Dark records similarly are beatable. You could maybe start looking at Defection Agent 5 Seconds and Chicago Agent 14 Seconds as records which probably aren't, but aside from these really short, simple levels, Perfect Dark generally has a lot of time left to squeeze out of it. And the way the game is just now starting to really get dug into deeply and examined using modern tools and technology, I'm going to make a bold prediction. Right now, the total time of the game, that being the world record on all 60 levels added up, stands at 127.23. I predict that by the end of 2019, one whole minute will be cut off that total time. That's an average of one second per stage in the game. 
it might be too bold, honestly, but I think that Perfect Dark is on the brink of a huge paradigm shift, where the game is studied and understood at a level far deeper than ever before. One minute and one second was cut in the year 2016, one minute and 56 seconds were cut in the year 2015, though most of that was from a single 25 second time saver on each of the three difficulties of the Mr. Blonde stage. You know, that will take a seven hour speed lore to explain sometime. But in 2014, only three seconds were trimmed from the game's time, in what seemed like it might have been the end of interest in Perfect Dark speedrunning. Games do have their ebbs and flows in participation, and I think the tide is really going to come on in on Perfect Dark this year. So there you have it, a new strategy, a new wall clip discovered by an Xbox Live Arcade player results in Perfect Dark's second oldest world record being beaten on original Nintendo 64. One that may have taken a Herculean effort to improve had it not been for this strategy. I never would have imagined something like this would happen, and it goes to show you truly never know what the future will bring. Good luck to everyone attempting to lower the records with this amazing strategy. Now, before I wrap up here, I want to make a bit of an announcement. Sometime soon, I don't know exactly when yet, but in the next few weeks, I will be doing a live stream on my Twitch channel, you know, like a Q&A stream or an Ask Me Anything type stream. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about things that have been going on with me and in the speedrunning community lately, and I want to address and answer those reflect on 2018, and talk about plans and goals for 2019, including what's going on with speed lore in the foreseeable future. When I have a time and date, I'll be sure to announce it, certainly at least in the community tab here on YouTube, so if you're watching this, you will probably see that notification. The stream will you know, probably be at like 2 a.m. Eastern time, since that's when I stream, and I know not everyone is up and available at that hour, but I do want to hear from you if you have any questions, so you can send anything to rwhitegooseama at outlook.com and I'll go through those and answer your questions on stream as well as, of course, take questions and comments from Twitch chat. The highlight will be viewable on my Twitch channel afterwards if you can't make the stream and I look forward to chatting with you. I really want to talk and listen to you guys and I'm serious about making really positive changes and being the best person I can be in 2019. So that will be coming up. You'll know when it's taking place. I look forward to seeing you then. And in the meantime, thanks for watching, stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.